Zap Tooling Alloys contacted me recently to test their Z-Ware with a new powder supplier. So in the past, they had their Z-Ware produced by an American powder metallurgy steel company, and they wanted to add a European powder company uh, to see if the suppliers were equivalent or even if the European supplier might be better. Now, multiple European powder metallurgy tool steel companies will claim that their powder metallurgy technology is newer and better than the older facilities in America. So they claim that their powder is finer to lead to smaller carbides and also that their process is cleaner, letting in less oxygen so that the oxygen content of the steel is lower because oxides in the steel can be brittle particles that lead to fracture, just like carbides can. So Bowler and Udahome, they have a facility that they call third generation, and they say that this is based on Aerosteel being the second generation, though Aerosteel has also made their own improvements that they call Devalin, which seem to be similar to some of the claims that Bowler Udahome makes. So it's interesting to see which companies might make better steel than others. In the past, I have measured the impurity content from Bowler, Udahome, Carpenter, and Crucible, European and American companies. And the phosphorus and sulfur impurities were similar between them, but the oxygen content, there were differences. So I found the lowest oxygen from Bowler and Udahome, which are made in the same facility. Uh, Carpenter had the highest oxygen content, and Crucible was in the middle. However, when I've tested the toughness of different steels that have the same composition but are made by different companies, I didn't find any differences. So M390 and 20CV, those are the same steels made by Bowler and Crucible, and the toughness was measured the same. As a side note, uh, these heat treatments I don't use anymore. I have found that the toughness is a little too high because of excess retained austenite, which leads to poor strength for a given hardness level. And when I looked at the microstructure of the two different steels, the carbide size is very similar. So if there is a finer particle size in the powder of the M390, it's not really leading to an improved microstructure, at least not any significant improvement. And if you look at Venatus 4 Extra and CPM M4, which are Udahome and Crucible steels of very similar composition, their carbides are much finer than M390 or 20CV because it's really the composition that matters. The Venatus 4 Extra and CPM 4V have vanadium carbides, which don't coarsen as much during hipping. That's the hot isostatic pressing that turns the powder into a solid ingot. And then the reheating before hot rolling both of those steps, the carbides will slowly coarsen. So the carbides start out super small in the powder form, and they coarsen during those high temperature processes. So because the vanadium carbides are more stable and coarsen more slowly, the final carbide size ends up smaller than chromium carbides like in M390 and 20CV. The chromium carbides coarsen more rapidly. So the carbide type is much more significant than the size of the powder. And when I tested the toughness of 4V and Venetus 4 Extra, the 4V actually ended up tougher. If we compare the heat treatments with a 1975 degree Fahrenheit austenitized and a 400 degree temper in a transverse direction test, which is the only test here which was identical between the two, the 4V was tougher. Now, it was also a little bit lower in hardness, so I think the difference here is just in carbon content, how much carbon ends up in solution prior to quenching. So that led to better toughness measured in the 4V than the Venatus 4 Extra, even though the Venatus 4 Extra is made with a process that they call third generation and superior to Crucible's powder metallurgy process, according to their marketing. Another comparison I made was between CPM-154 made by Crucible and RWL-34 made by Aerosteel. And these, again, are similar, nearly identical compositions. And in this case, the RWL-34 did test a little bit tougher than the CPM-154. But what led to that improved toughness, I'm not sure. You know, it could just be small composition differences or even differences just in the heat of the steel I tested at the CPM-154 versus the exact composition that resulted in this RWL-34. Can't say for sure without testing a whole bunch of them. 
Uh, so primarily, I have found identical toughness regardless of the company that made the steel. In some cases, it goes one way. In some cases, it goes another way based on composition. But when Zap contacted me, I was intrigued in testing these. And they asked me if we were to find differences, where would we find them? And I said, well, maybe if we tested a whole bunch of toughness coupons, we might find an effect of oxygen. Maybe, maybe not. You know, So I proposed, let's test nine coupons instead of my normal three or four in an impact toughness test with the American powder supplier and the European powder supplier. And we'll see if there's any difference in toughness in the Z-Wear made by these two different companies. So in the past, I have tested Z-Wear using the original version with an American supplier. I did this along with knife maker Warren Kryko, and we found a bunch of interesting things. This was an early study for knife steel nerds. Uh, we compared a low 400 degree temper versus the high 1000 degree temper. These are two different regimes of tempering. You can temper either low or high and get similar hardness. But the toughness with the 400 degree temper was measurably better than the 1000 degree temper. We also looked at cryo versus no cryo and how long the steel was held in the liquid nitrogen during the cryo step. Adding in cryo led to a small increase in hardness and really no change in toughness and holding in the liquid nitrogen any longer than one hour didn't seem to lead to any significant change in the hardness or toughness. We also compared the powder metallurgy Z-Wear against the conventional version of crewware. So not CPM crewware, but the conventional crewware used with typical ingot metallurgy technology. And of course, there is a significant difference in the toughness with the powder metallurgy version being much tougher than the conventional version. And that is because of the carbide size difference. So if we look at the carbide size of crewware, the carbides are both large and small with an uneven distribution and size and uh, shape. And so the carbides are much bigger. A large carbide is easier to fracture than a small carbide. So if there are big carbides in the steel, then those fracture and that leads to uh, low toughness in the steel. On the flip side, Z-Wear or CPM Crewwear, they have small and evenly distributed carbides and so the toughness is better. We also looked at number of tempers, and there wasn't really any change in hardness or toughness if we tempered two, three, or four times. Uh, so using all of that, I came up with a base heat treatment to do with the two powder suppliers for the Z-Wear. Did 1950 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes, a plate quench, cryo and liquid nitrogen, and then a double temper at 400 degrees for two hours each time. And I tested nine coupons from each supplier. Now, the USA version ended up being 63 Rockwell, and the European version ended up being 61.9 Rockwell. I figured out why, which I'll explain in just a minute. And the European version, which was softer, was slightly tougher, about one foot pound higher. And the standard deviation in toughness was a little bit wider in the European version, meaning there's more variation between low and high results. But there is a trend between low and high toughness where low toughness steels will have a small range of toughness. You know, something with five foot pounds might vary from four and a half to five and a half foot pounds, while something that's 50 foot pounds might vary from 35 to 60. The range gets bigger. So I don't think this necessarily means anything, but basically these steels were very similar apart from hardness, where the USA version ended up a little harder and the toughness didn't change that much between them. There were no one-off coupons I had to drop. There were no coupons that showed evidence of large extra oxide particles leading to lower toughness. So to investigate why the USA version ended up one Rockwell higher, I measured the composition of the steels. And I did this with two methods. One is optical emission spectroscopy and one is with leco combustion. So the combustion method is better at looking at light elements. So its carbon measurement is better than the OES carbon measurement. And it's also able to measure oxygen and nitrogen and have a better measurement of sulfur than the OES, where the OES cannot measure oxygen or nitrogen. So with both OES and combustion, the carbon content was higher in the USA version. Also, the chromium content was lower in the USA version, which can also lead to a little bit higher hardness. So both of those things at least partially explain, if not wholly explain, why the USA version came out harder. One interesting thing is that when I looked at the oxygen content, the European version had a similar oxygen content to my previous Bowler and Udahome LMAX and M390. 
but the USA version actually had the lowest oxygen I've ever measured for any powder metallurgy steel. So I don't know if this is because the USA company has made an improvement in their process or if this is just from variation from batch to batch of steel called a heat. So variation between heats of steel. Uh, I also am not sure why this oxygen content is so low. You know, it could be that the high chromium content in the stainless steels M390 and LMAX lead to higher oxygen, but I'm not sure about that. This isn't an area that I know too much about the effective composition on how much oxygen ends up in a powder metallurgy steel, but that is an interesting question to explore possibly in the future. So because they were one Rockwell apart and only one foot pound different, I needed some way of evaluating, you know, is one Rockwell, does that equal one foot pound? How much should we expect the toughness to change based on Rockwell hardness? So I pulled up our original Z-Wear test, which varied in hardness, especially from about 62 Rockwell to 64 Rockwell. So I plotted that out and then put the new USA measurement and the new European supplier measurement on there. The new USA material tested similarly to the original USA made material, you know, just slightly below that trend line from before, but that's definitely within, you know, the normal distribution we would expect. The new European material is a little bit below the trend line. I think the materials are still roughly equivalent. I wouldn't choose one or the other based on this result, but the European one did test slightly worse if we plot hardness versus toughness. So overall, I would conclude, at least in this impact testing with nine coupons, we did not measure a significant difference between the two companies. Whatever is happening with oxygen, it doesn't seem to lead to significant differences in impact toughness. Whether another test might show a difference, I can't say for sure, but in impact testing, I have not yet found a significant difference between the different powder metallurgy tool steel companies. So I think the composition matters more than the company making the powder, at least for these companies. You know, none of them have a bad reputation. They're all good tool steel companies making pretty high quality powder. So I think don't worry too much about the company making the powder metallurgy steel. And uh, thanks to my Patreon supporters, you make testing like this possible. If you want to support more knife steel testing, please go to patreon.com slash knife steel nerds. So thanks everybody. Until next time.